My bench journey is a story of loss, sadness, redemption, kindness, inner fortitude, strength, and humanity. It is the story of the power of love and hope. It is also the story of how photography is not only an art form, but an influence on everyday awareness, and in my case, a way to heal. Photography, like any art form, isn't always about the art. It's also about life. My, my bench journey is not done. It's a long road, and I intend to keep walking it along with my camera. But it's a long and winding road, and so we need to start at the beginning. Growing up, there was always a camera in the house. It was a priority with my parents, even though they didn't have much money. They always seemed to have a nice camera. I received my first camera at nine years old. It was a Christmas present, and I was thrilled to get that camera. Many of you probably had that same little Kodak brownie squarish thing that was um, 127 film, I think it took. I was so excited to receive it. I loved that camera, and many, if not most, of the black and white photos and then color photos that graced the family photo albums were shot by me. Family events, Christmases, the dog, even the very first photos of my baby sister, who was 11 years younger. So after getting married and having two daughters, we continued the camera tradition, starting with that same little brownie camera, and ultim ultimately ended up with a digital camera. What a miracle that digital camera seemed to someone who wanted to take lots of photos. No more, ha no more paying for film or developing. It was fabulous, and I don't have to tell you about that. We captured all those family moments, the kids growing up, vacations, Christmases, holidays, birthdays, graduations, special events, all the family things that everybody does. The decades went by, the daughters grew up and left the nest, but the history of our family was captured in dozens of photo albums, 5,000 slides in file boxes, and lots of files on the computer. Life was good. We were an ordinary American family doing ordinary things, loving and living our best lives. And then that call came, the one all parents dread and fear, and our lives would never be the same. Our beautiful, smart, funny, fabulous younger daughter had suffered a fatal pulmonary embolism. Six months after her death, her dad and I journeyed to Colorado where her employer had a dedication in her memory on her birthday. A bench with a plaque dedicated to her was installed at the entrance of the office. It was a lovely event. I somehow managed to read my message and her friends and coworkers turned to me, to me, for consolation. I liked the bench idea so much that when we got home, I went out the very next day and bought one for our backyard and installed it in a very, very special spot. It overlooked the wilderness park in back of our house where Kim enjoyed going on hikes. Little did I know that my adventures with benches had just begun. But how does one go on after something like this happens unexpectedly, out of the blue? Well, you just do, you have to. Because if you don't, and sadly some people don't, then it's a triple tragedy to yourself, to those who love and care about you, and to your yeah. departed loved one who would want you to continue on living a good and full life. You owe it to them, and you owe it to yourself, and those who care about you. 
I truly believe that, and that belief kept me going. But it wasn't easy. You're still on the team, still playing the game, but you're benched. Wishing you weren't on that bench, but also hoping that nobody notices you there and calls on you to participate. Just leave me alone. The passage of time is a great help in healing. Those early years after Kim's death were spent doing all the things normally done, trying to lead a normal life. But I felt like a robot, doing what needed to be done, both at home and at work, and somehow I did it. To people who knew and cared about me, it appeared I was coping, coping well, doing okay, moving forward, and I was so very strong. Of course, none of that was true. Make no mistake, it's a tough road to walk. You walk it alone and there are no benches along the way for rest and respite. Unfortunately, some of you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So time went on, it always does. Like so many others, I joined Facebook, made some new connections, reconnected with old friends, even had first time contact with some first cousins that I had never met growing up. I got my first iPhone and realized that once again I had a new camera <laughs> and one that I didn't have to share with my husband. <laughs> Sharing is not always what is cracked up to be. We knew that as children and we know it as adults. Who wants to share? <laughs> so I shot lots and lots of photos with that iPhone camera. They were mostly shots around my neighborhood of flowers, plants, trees, my cats, mailboxes, fire hydrants, everyday kind of subjects. I needed a goal. I needed something I could focus on and was excited about. So that goal was to post one photo a day. No politics, no controversial subjects, only funny or inspirational postings. The chance to put forth some positivity, and just have some fun. Was this frivolous, a waste of time? Perhaps, but it was fun, and for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was coming back to life and not continuing to be stuck in that dark place, inching my way around that dark hole in my heart. It was often easier and more comfortable to stay in that dark hole, but now I want it out. And then that message came, the one that left me flabbergasted and astounded. That message, like the phone call, absolutely changed my life, but this time for the better. A Facebook friend with whom I went to high school although he was a senior when I was a freshman, so I really didn't know him, offered me his camera. He had been following my iPhone photos and thought I showed talent and promise. He was upgrading and wanted to give me, just give me his Nikon D90 <coughs> so I could try out some serious photography without having to spend any money, see if I liked it or not. I was his first choice, much to my amazement. After picking myself up off the floor, we haggled a little bit because I really wanted to pay him something for it, but he would not have it. You either want it or you don't. So I remembered something a dear friend had told me once before. Sometimes you have to let other people do nice things for you. And so I graciously accepted, and he immediately messengered the camera to me, along with three or four lenses, a battery charger, and even the real manual, not the printout off the computer, the real little book. <coughs> but I wasn't very excited when the camera arrived, and I checked it out. It scared me to death, if the truth be known. All those buttons and menus, 
they overwhelmed me and I felt I had taken on something I wouldn't be able to do and I wasn't really excited about failing. I tend to not give myself much credit in all things techy. Running this machine was my biggest fear today. And sometimes we women tend to let other people handle those things for us. Probably not a good idea. I'm getting better. But I woke up the next morning with a more positive attitude, telling myself I wasn't stupid and I could do this somehow. So I spent one day in auto mode and decided that the toe in the water wasn't right for me. And so I decided to dive in head first. I switched to aperture priority mode. I shot raw and I installed Lightfoot, uh, Lightfoot, Lightroom <laughs> on my computer. It was time to sink or swim. And I'm a fairly good swimmer. And so began my journey with my camera and benches. Practice, practice, practice was my new mantra, and that is the advice I still give to anybody who asks. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I went to practice had a bench or two or ten. I had not really paid that much attention to them before, but I started photographing them because they called my name. I didn't find them, they found me, and they were everywhere. This bench was my first official bench photo, and it was in my very own neighborhood. It was one I passed by probably hundreds of times over the years and never saw it, partly because it was hidden if I walked the same direction, which I did, but more because although I was looking, I wasn't seeing. A quote from Henry David Thoreau says it all. It's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. I happened to turn around and finally saw it and went home and got my camera. When practicing and looking for interesting or beautiful subjects, I've always found it easiest to start in my own neighborhood. And these next few photos are of benches in the Wilderness Park and the Playground Park that were literally within steps of my house. How lucky was that? There's beauty everywhere around us. Look and see. From my own neighborhood, I branched out and looked around my town, Thousand Oaks, California. One of my very favorite places to go was the Reagan Library. It's actually in Simi Valley, but just a handful of miles from my house. Many times I was there just to take photos, usually in the beautiful gardens and on the edge of the property, enjoying the breathtaking views. Of course, the library is the final resting place of President and Mrs. Reagan, and they could not have picked a better spot. There are many benches around that property to where visitors can stop and rest, enjoy the breathtaking views, think about our nation's history, tie their shoes, change a camel lens. Thousand Oaks turned out to be a treasure trove of places to go to practice with my camera, and much to my surprise, lots and lots of benches. <laughs> it must be remembered, and I remind people of this because I get teased about it, that I was not looking for benches. They showed up without fanfare, 
as I found other beautiful places to shoot. I looked, I saw, I shot. Here are a few more samples. Most of them are City Hall in Thousand Oaks, uh, various parks and gardens, the library, and the main shopping mall. Southern California has many beautiful and photogenic places, and lo and behold, there are benches in those places too. The California missions are some of my favorite places to go with my camera. The grounds are always interesting and beautiful with many different types of benches. Some of my other favorite Southern California spots include the Huntington Library, the Botanic Garden in Long Beach, Mission Bay in San Diego, and the 9-11 annual flag tribute at Pepperdine University. And of course, I took my camera with me on vacations and found many benches along the way, including the Canadian train trip in the summer, Durango, Mesa Verde, and Solvang in the fall. Great Basin National Park, Ely, just before winter. New Orleans, when enjoying a family reunion. New York City in the spring. Mm -hmm. 
Death Valley, Rhyolite, just before it got hot. And my most recent trip to Cedar City, Cedar Break, St. George, Bryce Canyon, and Zion National Park this past fall. People often ask me questions about my benches. Some tease me about them, calling me the bench lady or sometimes even adding crazy to that title. They ask me what I look for in a bench. Nothing. They just have to catch my eye. But sometimes it is about the bench. And sometimes it's about the setting of an otherwise basic, utilitarian, undistinguishable bench. I feel lucky when I get both a unique bench and a stunning setting. That's like hitting the, the Vegas jackpot. And I'm not really picky about my definition of a bench. I call this a bench. And I also call this a bench. Basically, if two or more people can sit on it, it's a bench. The kindness of people has come shining through. Not many know the genesis of my so-called bench obsession but they do understand that for whatever reason, I like to take photos of benches. So I have received many photos over the past few years when I was tagged or friends have directly posted on my <coughs> timeline, usually with a kind remark about thinking about me when they see this bench, whether it was when they were out and about someplace, maybe on vacation, or they saw a photo of a bench and thought of me. It always, always warms my heart because no matter what kind of person we are, what we do or don't believe in, what we like or dislike intensely, who we vote for, who or what we pray to, what color, religion, ethnicity we are, we are all capable of responding kindly and graciously and letting our better sides shine. That might seem like a huge, huge <coughs> takeaway from this journey with benches, but it still makes me smile and always will when somebody thinks about me and lets me know exactly that by sending me a bench. <coughs> I've received photos from new friends from Las Vegas. <coughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Old friends from their neck of the woods. Central Park, Maryland, Pittsburgh, Utah, Ireland, the Vatican, I thought that one, and even <coughs> Cuba. To name just a very, very few. So what now for my benches? A couple of year, years ago, I made a bench book dedicated to Kim and thought perhaps that would be the finale. It was very satisfying to see some of those photos all gathered in one place, and I printed two more books besides the one I have. 
to give to friends of Kim who had a big impact on her life as friends in her later adult years. No family member received a book, although they were welcome to see it. It was a labor of love, no other reason, and I did it for me, just for me. As far as I was concerned, the shooting of benches was probably over. But then that question was asked, and once again, life took a big change. The question was, what do you think about moving to Vegas? So we decided to move to Vegas to be closer to our older daughter, who had moved here 18 months earlier. We wanted to have a new adventure after living in the same place for so long, nearly our whole lives. Much to my amazement, there were so many beautiful and photogenic places in my new town. And like everywhere else, benches were everywhere. So why would I stop now? If you haven't noticed all the benches in this beautiful place, I'll give you a very brief look. You won't have to look very hard to find them. Spring Mountain Ranch. Springs Preserve. Clark County Wetlands. Lloyd Lamb Park and Tool Springs. The Mob Museum. Exploration Peak Park. Down on Blue Diamond, one of my favorite places to go. Red Rock Canyon and Calico Basin. The Veterans Cemetery in Boulder City. Lake Mead. Police Memorial Park. It's up on off of Cheyenne. Mount Charleston. And of course, my very own backyard. A year ago, this one. Apparently, I will always be photographing benches when they find me. Although I have a very few of my own photographs hanging in my house, there are no bench photos. That surprised me. I hadn't really thought about it until I was writing this presentation. So I guess I need to do something about that. So if I had to choose just one bench photo, which one would it be? There are more than 500 of them. Surprisingly, it wasn't a very hard decision. It would be this one. It's the bench in the wilderness park that was behind my house in Thousand Oaks. A very short walk of maybe five or six minutes. It was a quiet place to go, sit on that bench, think about things, life things, all kinds of things. It had a beautiful view, and on an evening when there was a stunning sunset, there was no better place to be. Everyone should have an escape place like that, one that is easily accessible when a quiet moment of peace and serenity is needed. That's pretty often in my life. I hope you find that quiet place if you don't have one already. Don't be surprised if your place ends up being a bench somewhere. And don't be surprised if you see me there with my camera. <laughs> Kippy had said that folks like handouts, so I have made a note card, and you are welcome to have one. I'll leave them down at the end of the table. And I'd like to thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, go for it. Thank you.
spend a lot of time waiting for people to get off your bench. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's what I wonder too. Do I you work and wait for them? Yeah, I do. Um, the, the bench at the end that's in the park, I had been up there taking pictures and I was starting to leave, but I was going to take a couple more. And this woman and her little boy came up and they walked down on the bench. And she looked at me and she said, So, what are you taking a photo of? And I said, That bench. If you've never seen anybody fly, 